Hi folks, we had to make a run of this aluminum adapter and I thought it would be a good job shop life Wednesday widget. So let's do some machining footage on the Tormach CNC lathe, on the mill, and then at the end we'll take a look at the Fusion 360 CAD and CAM. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. especially since we uh, turned the coolant off. So we turned on the lathe first because even though the part OD is 750, 750 uh, aluminum extrusion bar stock has a real crummy surface finish. So that gives us this beautiful shiny finish. It also is one way for me to part it off uh, to a known length, which is a hair longer. Uh, we, you'll notice we did a back chamfer. So now what we do, we've got a 5C collet set up in here. It's got a collet stop in it. So I'm just gonna slide that in against the stop hand tighten and then use my spanner. Run our 5C against our vice stop and we're ready for the mill work. Two good uh, tooling takeaways, I think, from this part. One is this guy. This is a Mary Tool two flute insert chamfer end mill. Uh, here's what I love about it. It takes the same inserts as this Tormach Superfly. So I already own them, both for aluminum and steel, and we all know they cut friggin' beautifully. So what's awesome is that, like in the past, you try to use um, a regular mill drill with a 45 degree tip, to create that uh, that little side chamfer in the in the part, 
you're never going to get a great finish. So that tool in one fell swoop gives us a really nice floor and that sidewall. One of the things that one of the reasons it can do that, aside from it being a good insert, is you're creating the chamfer with an insert all the way out here. So you've got much better surface feet per minute than on a tool like this, where you'd have to be using the very tip of the tool, which as we all know from the carbide feeds and speeds and surface feet per minute video series, um, stinks. The other thing you guys saw that we did is you use one of these, use the shoulder to clean it up, and then we can come back and spot with this. Um, I probably should do a little bit better job on my drilling. That might be either a dull drill or a junky drill, but it was leaving a little bit of a burr, not a huge deal, but um, I want to be proud of the parts that we make, and that one I think looks great. The turned surface looks great. Uh, the through hole, the, the face, the part, tolerances, length, I control all of it. I'm creating all the geometry. That's a win. I'll quickly show how I created the CAD. Our C for circle, I'll sketch on this plane. Create a 0.75 inch and extrude it down negative 1.75. I'm going to go fast here because the point is uh, to bang through it. If you want to see more, watch our Fusion Friday videos uh, where we go through the stuff like this in more detail or shoot us an email. I'll do L for line, and I'm going to create a line on this plane. I'll just sketch anywhere like so, and now I'll dimension it. 275, this angle to here was... 180 minus 45 should get us there. And I can just hit Q, click that, and I'll do a symmetric cut, drag it out, click OK. C for circle right here, 0.25. I'll hit L for line. I'll just create a sketch geometry. So I see I created a black line that snaps through that. Click on it once, hit X, that changed it to construction. I'm going to move this one off of it, hit point, and I'll put a point in the middle and just use a sketch constraint to make sure that stays right in the middle. See it's black now. Q for press pull, drag all the way through, and hit C for circle. The same thing right here, concentric, 0.5. I think actually it was a 0.425. And drag down 0.05. That's all that we really need. So the way we did the cam was... First to do some lathe operations, and again, face it, profile it, profile for a cleanup pass, which probably wasn't necessary, and then we wanted to create a back chamfer on that part, so I did a chamfer using the parting tool. I wanted to back chamfer this edge that wasn't modeled, but if we add a chamfer from just turning chamfer and use our parting tool, you can see It'll give us a little back chamfer, and we do that by, under passes, it says chamfer width, and if you read the hover over for edges that are not already chamfer, this is the final width. Awesome. And then we part her off. We're leaving an extra 10 thou, I think. When we come in here to the mill cam, we've got our tool modeled up, we're facing it off. We're doing a 2D contour on that front face, and the best way that I figured it to do it was to add this piece of material down here. What that did was that let me d drive the height of my tool so that we were cutting at the correct level. There probably is a better way, but that's how I did it. Spot it, drill it, 2D contour that uh, pocket to interpolate that countersink. And then for the third setup, I actually just copied or duplicated that operation and deleted everything except the face and the countersink. And that's all I had to do because we flip our part, but it's symmetric. so. Honestly, didn't even need to model this stuff originally on the bottom side. Hope you enjoyed that Wednesday widget, folks. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>